Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia Nova Lots of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Andre Zadanov, lover, and I hope you enjoy the thumbnail as well. But we gotta talk about the Collective Consciousness Initiative, inconclusive. Abstract, for testing purposes, or periods, 1 to 19, six subjects were placed into sterile experimentation chambers and locked into chairs, forming a circle in the center of the chamber. Following this procedure, the operators of the initiative uplinked connection systems into and around the lymph nodes of the subjects' necks, and into the brain stems of the subjects. These connection systems serve to apply electrodes to the subjects and the graph the brain wave activity of the subjects for use in data collection. The subjects themselves, procured from the Gulag system, all demonstrated obedient, somewhat syncophantish behavior when faced with the operator of the initiative. The connection systems uplinked to the subjects to a data expunge to serve as a prototype for the collective consciousness system once initiated. Subjects in testing periods 1 through 14 all redacted due to malfunctions in the technology of the data expunged, ranging from electricity being set too high to misplacement of the uplink implant locations for testing periods 15 through 19. All subjects remain redacted for the entirety of the testing period, however. <clears throat> Uh, up, uh, upon the uplink being removed, all subjects experienced dizziness and four fainted for periods ranging from 30 minutes to 15 hours. Following interrogations of subjects, the majority reported experiences or experiencing a state of collective consciousness and recalled how they could feel the same sensations as other subjects. And to add, some differences in subject behavior were noticed afterwards, although nothing that would suggest undergoing a procedure as dramatic as collective consciousness. The reliability of subjects is also questionable regarding their behavior. The operators have hypothesized that the subjects were attempting to escape sentences by being exceptionally well behaved test subjects. This hypothe hypothesis might also extend to the testimony of the subjects, but more research is necessitated before any statements can be made on the matter. Data expunged. And also, I do want to see over here. Oh, look at this. So we do have this. I wanted to see this off. Experimental Weapons Initiative. We have Social Society Initiative, which is really cool. More daily social support, which I didn't realize we had. And then we have Psychological Re Revolution Initiative. Not bad. Our social stability. That's all right. And we're still trying to prepare the border. It's only 69 still, and we're just trying to save some money and expand society as much as possible. So... Very good. And now, Mental Communications Initiative. Studies into self styled psychics and telepathic phenomena shall be carried out, and subjects talented in psychokinetic phenomena shall be integrated into this program as additional resources. Studies into the quantification and statistical basis of parapsychological phenomena shall be carried out, and experiments into the biocommunication shall be prioritized. Psychics shall all be separated from each other by barriers made up of various materials and made to transmit te telepathically to determine the factual limits and basis of telepath telepathic phenomena. The noted phenomena shall be reported to the intelligence services to be made use in, of in capacities useful to the party and, of course, the state. Revolutionary literature partial success. Three groups of children were drafted from X. Group A consisted of 10 between ages 5 to 7. Group B consisted of 10 children ages 10 to 12. And Group C consisted of 10 young adults up to age 14 and 16. Over a six-month period, they had been assigned edit edited literature to read or hear, including... War and peace, but set during the Civil War. The last of the Mohicans, with the Native Americans explicitly being an ideal communist society. The legend of King Arthur with a round table edited to be a Soviet that fights for the rights of the mud worker communes. See complete list on page 110. All the books have been modified by elite propagandists to represent Marxist principles, as well as utilize modern terms and technical language. Results by group. Group A. Analysis revealed consistent changes in the th children's behavior. Their minds have been permanently molded by revolutionary literature, and they're more inclined to support our efforts in the future. Group B. Analysis is inconclusive. Only a few subjects reshaped their worldview. Group C. Failed experiment. The young adults dismissed the literature in its entirety. Only three individuals thought it was entertaining and neat, but did not take it seriously. Conclusion. I believe that it is indeed possible to shape the minds of young children with altered literature. I've taken the liberty of requesting blank to edit existing films and songs with subliminal clips. We should try this experiment with more subjects and focus on younger groups. Post test. All children were returned to X and their families compensated with extra rations. The next batch is, of course, standing by. And we're pretty much done here. We're, we're repurposing some infrastructure here, but not bad. Very nice. As uh, so we continue doing more experiments and such like that, let's go ahead and do Subliminal Immersion Initiative. Groups of involuntary subjects contained within the Gulag system will be confined to a limited area and subjected to constant low level white noise containing a set of subliminal phrases. All buildings and dormitories within the chosen camp shall be retrofitted to implement secure speaker systems within each building. And around the camp perimeter, in inmate behavior shall be closely monitored during this time and conversations analyzed for trends pertaining to concepts associated with these phrases. Beautiful. And at this point, we could do this, but we don't really need that one. Re Let's go and reunify Russia, just because we might as well. And because I want to get more uh, higher credit rating as well. And, but welcome to the Federation of Soviet Socialist Republics, my friends. And we can reunify the motherland later. Oh, 71. So we still have another year. Oh, it actually have to be after 1971. Yeah, that's fine. We'll still have plenty of time to do that stuff. Unfortunately, regional development is now over, which does suck. But, oh well. But let's continue on with uh, expand the people's commissariat of science. The superculture cannot be founded upon the ignorance fostered by division and factionalism. We must pull the sum total of our knowledge into one body. Every academic and learned man must contribute to our goals. To better coordinate this effort, we will increase funding and expand the duties of the co people's commissariat of science, maximizing our scientific potential and invigorate our technological capacity. Before we do that, the research facilities 
Uh, yeah, I'll give that one, why not? I just want to see how far we can get with that one. So, and also, after that one, we shall do... Oh, ooh, more research facilities. Um, actually, with that in mind, modern research facilities... We can get up to politicized academia. I think we might want to wait. At the rate of 5, we go up by 2, 7. We're a little more than halfway. It might be best to go through all this up and then go to closed cities. Absorb compatible elements. The atomic age. Uranium extraction efforts. Or over diversified applications. The ultimate weapon. It's not bad. Rocket equation. Polikahili. Which I wonder where that came from. That uh, focus tree or uh, image. Huh. Oh, that's not bad too. Uh, social superculture. Ooh, admin efficiency. We want to maximize that one as fast as possible, though. But the march of revolutionary progress, unity and vision. Ooh, we get it right there too. That's good to do as well. And this one says we can approve. And this one approve as well. Unity and ideology. Applied Zidane of China. Not bad. The way for humanity is open. Ooh, that's going to we'll probably get worse now. Mm. The march of revolutionary progress. For years we struggled under the reign of the counter-revolutionary and the Ludi, who now comfort in the darkness of ignorance. Yet now, years after Russia's collapse into a dark age of ignorance, we stand upon the brink of a brave new era, marching onwards into the light. No more shall the reactionaries keep us chained to infighting and petty warlordism. We shall craft a new Russia from the ashes of the old, ascending to achieve the Soviet superculture. The antiquated. Democracies and dictatorship shall melt away before the grandeur of ultra-visionary socialism, the only true path forward for a nation and species. For first, however, we must prepare for the push to retake Siberia from the regressives who claim to be the rightful leaders of Russia. Mental communication initiative inconclusive. They awoke to a low buzzing in dim lights. The buzzing resembled the rattlings of earrings or metallic stones. The lights radiated from above and shifted periodically from the dark blues and purples of a starry midnight sky to the warm pinks and beiges of dusk. They were dressed in rags as it was usual for these types of experiments. They were a and husband who had each volunteered for the experiments claiming to be psychics for the reward of food and vouchers as was advertised. It only took a couple months for them to become the lab's favorite guinea pigs. None of the psychics had been in any intimate relationships with other psychics, but these two, they were special in that regard. Perhaps telepathic links could be strengthened through love and knowledge of each other. Whether or not the case, their stay in the testing labs exceeded months over the promise of time frame. Staring at each other, each with gaunt skeletal complexions and shaved heads, they skulked or sulked in the misery of their own situation. Bulletproof glass separated them. Yesterday it was rusty metal, and before that was the curtain of broken wires. Every day, it was a new material separating them. A new sound in the background, and a new color of light hanging above their heads. Finally, they were able to see each other, their eyes met. It had been months since they last saw, and what, with whatever moisture left in their bodies, they cried at the sight of one another. The wife pointed her eyes towards a ventilation shaft on the wall, the researcher's method of viewing her, their behavior. She began nodding her head as if she was talking, but she didn't move her mouth. The husband followed step. Their conversation went on for hours before the scientists intervened. You know, we would, you know, we would like to know, what would you say caused a surge of telepathy? Uh, the lights or a background of noise, or perhaps it just took a few months before a proper link was established. Love and confidence in her abilities. With these words, they were free. Let's get another couple, shall we? Aw, oh, yeah. And uh, let's continue with Project Rainbow Body. A comprehensive series of studies in extrasensory perception aided by a psychoactive drug shall be completed. With the goal of locating German military emplacements remotely, brain scans shall be performed of subjects claiming to be capable of extrasensory perception. And tests performed shall be verified by conventional reconnaissance aircraft. German military emplacements located and verified by subjects shall be logged and reported to the armed forces. Additionally, research into affecting the world remotely through extrasensory perception shall be executed with subjects capable of entering a transcendental transcendental state, ordered to perform remote physical tests on army proving grounds. Ah, yeah. And of course, we have legislation to add more people to the assembly, which we'll get to in a little bit, but that's all right. And the economy is doing pretty darn okay. And GDP is doing well, sorry. And we have two of surplus as well. Of course, it does help that we did, or at least I did cut down all of our divisions, so. Good job, good job, good job. So yeah, we'll convert these guys a little bit, probably about halfway through the year, uh, so we can get ready to go to war with basically Rurik. But after the march, Unity and Vision, I believe, we are going to do next. Yes, please. As we say, to get to march. It will be many years before the Paramount leader's ultimate vision of a spacefaring multi-series collective is fulfilled, but we're closer than ever to that goal. However, before we take a rightful place among the stars, we must first deal with the earthly matters. Great swaths of our territory are still controlled by the rival government, preventing the industrialization we need to further fund our future, and denying those under their rule to participate in the grand collective we are assembling. But even worse, the Germans have returned their stolen lands to a state of regressive oppression, forcing the people of Muscovy into a stagnant or oppressive hierarchy. We must put an end to their misdeeds and incorporate the peoples of that territory into the superculture to do that. We must restore our control of Siberia's resources. The March of Revolutionary Progress. Andrei Zadanev sometimes found them smiling, genial socialists he'd been once been almost 80, a thorough stranger compared to the man he was now. As the Federation has grown in complexity and size, who too has its administration's functions. 
It don't seem like half his job was scheduling meetings for the right people to meet each other and get things done for him. The other half, however, Zidane smiled. The other half of his job made it all as worthwhile. The old dream he hid in was coming to view in gluts of weekly reports from scientists. The limits of the human mind were being stretched into new shapes and patterns even where his ideas had failed. They had given so much information in the bargain that he couldn't say. They had been favors at all. Soon the new socialist man would rise like the titan from the deep. Uh, <clears throat> Superman ready to rebuild the Shattered Union and bring the proletarian humanity to where they'd always dreamt of going, the stars, and the machines on which they would ride were coming into being. Two, as his testing initiatives grew ever more expansive, their tests lost them into fruition. Two, forget about military applications. He'd always told the generals, the wonder is enough. And the wonder Zidane of experience as he read about the test flies he couldn't watch personally was like a man watching the summer stars dreaming of taking flight. Yes, like a scene in a dream. Not in quietly, Zidane had rummaged around a study and began a new series of scribblings in a well-worn leather book. Frowning, he scrapped the first draft he's drawn and began a new one. This one was far more complex than the first. Notice the self-referential articles abounded, and with them actual scientific reports, but in the center were three clear and outlined words circled repeatedly as the child's drawing. They read, moving towards superculture? And let's see, I want to look over here. Admin efficiency 5, yeah, it's totally fine I'm doing that one. And also then, beelining for this one as well. United, or unity in ideology is not bad, but after this one. Absorb compatible elements. The old nuclear program, weapons program, was started by Bukharin's regime, and while not devoted to the same ultra-visionary principles as us, many of the scientists will be willing and able to participate in our own program. We should make every possible effort to entice them in our service. Our supremacy lies ahead. As it should. So we got 95 days for that project, which we got other things there to do. Uh, we got 154 days and 39 days left in the human utopia. Hmm. Oh, yes, please. A speech to the Politburo. Our objectives, insofar as pertains to Russia, are clear. We are tasked with our, the preservation of the motherland, and we failed. We swore to, our, to ourselves to expel the Germans from Moscow to push them all the way back to Berlin, and then to in this, we fail. But now we have something that no one else in the Shattered Union has, the ultra-visionary immortal science. The Bukharinists and the Rajuntas refumbled have blind in the search for progress, and the fascists and monarchists and bourgeois pseudo-democracy stumbled fully blind into their error. We know that our course is true. Our people are the benchmark in the science of Marxism or guide. But a man looking towards the stars will never be content with the things of Earth alone. We speak often of re-engineering the economy, of building a fair and better way of life for all through, this, through the scientific control of goods production. We also speak of rebuilding society, of tearing down the walls between man and woman, between work and politician, to separate us from each other. But to do this alone is not sufficient. I believe now, comrades, that we must re-engineer the human heart itself. That just as the patient farmer year after year nudges his crops to greater fecundity, we too can create a bumper harvest in the Soviet youth and the generations after them. We know that the Marxist dialectic dictates the struggle in the mind. We know how to condition these struggles to tilt one way or another so that the future of the Soviet mass consciousness leads ever more towards greater unity. This is our future, comrades. Not a world consumed by the struggle against fascist reactionism or fear of its inevitability. A world where the very thought of it is impossible. Understood. In closed cities. And we have some comments to go through, but close cities first. With a rapid development in the realms of science, we must ensure that no aggressive who seeks an easy path can steal or advances from us. We must take whole cities, devote them entirely towards scientific progress, and close them all. Or close them to all non-approved individuals. Security is paramount, undoubtedly so, when dealing in nuclear secrets. Ooh, these facilities be begin to rapidly improve. Well, let's double check the research stuff too. Um, membership to Vietnam. Oh, actually, we'll put that one. Research. Uh, yeah, I think I'm right. Yeah, you know what? We can wait for that one. Then I want to wait till we get the mm, research rapidly improve. I'm not really good. Eight. How many months would that be? It'd be quite a few months. Seven is actually really good as well. Hmm. We vote for the yes. The atomic age. Uh, I do want to do that one. Do we get any more research? Because I don't mind waiting if we get another one, but... Social sphere permeation. United ideology, assess the reclaimed territories. Ah, this one. We are under no illusions about the difficulties inherent in our venture to create a unifying superculture from the desperate mass of humanity. Still, against all odds, we have subsumed millions of individuals into a collective, and now possess a great deal of new territory along with all the resources that come with it. Above all, the oil fields we have captured will provide us with power, fuel, and funding for our projects. On tr our tractors, tanks, and sooner rockets will show run on this black hole, propelling our expansion in the lost territories to the east. The remainder shall be sold to fund our scientific projects, serving the interests of the Soviet people. An administrative committee will be created to evaluate the qualities and uses of this and other resources, and ensure maximum efficiency of our efforts. Yeah, do we really have enough time? Nah. At this point, there's no point to, like, really wait. Ooh, this stuff is really good to get, though. Yeah, this is really good. Mmm, I do want that one. But, ah, eh, just do it anyways, why not? And that be the one, yeah. Yeah. 
During the Bukharan era, Yaroslav was enchanted by the stars and movement and light. His fascination with Soviet science fiction novels led to probably the most important choice he made in his entire life, he decided. Two, <clears throat> dedicate himself to astronomy, but everything went to heck when the war broke out. His family and his hometown, his friends, all gone. The only thing left was his work. With a refugee caravan, he got to Yekaterinburg, where he got employed in a local research facility years past. Yaroslav got fired for secretly spending the facility's money on the personal telescopes, and after that, he mostly survived by doing manual labor tasks for pennies or teaching basics of astronomy in rural schools until he got a letter. It randomly appeared in the mailbox one day. After reading it, Yaroslav froze for a second. It was an invitation to work for the government. The letter had a detailed list of Yaroslav's pre war achievements. Some of them were forgotten by Yaroslav himself. He quickly departed to the facility, as he had nothing left to lose if he agrees, not to mention the rumors he heard about scientists who refused to cooperate with the government in the Soviet Federation. After all procedures, Yaroslav was sitting in his new office trying to estimate how much money was spent on his new facility. Just like, just the equipment in the astronomical department probably cost the entire building of the facility he previously worked in. Not to mention everything else. Whatever the government plans, Yaroslav was fine with it as long as it, they will let him do what he always wanted. This time around, money ain't an issue. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you, I mean, I want to get it, uh, the next level and then do it, which would be best overall. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, we won't have enough time. To do all these focuses and then do that after we get to the next era, so yeah, it's fine. Another joins a full. If you worry about that again, please go right ahead. As we just finished up our land doctrine. For now, let us be merry, my friends. So I apologize. All this confusion. All this confusion. Close cities. You might as well get it now. Oh, good. Good job, Borman. So after that, we're gonna do United Ideology, so we can go to this on the right side. What? Oh, they decline! Bra, bra. This is key in our goals. Russia must be totally united. Not just in geography, but a line of the principles of the new Soviet state. Achievement of the superculture requires a complete alignment of citizenry on all fronts, so that we might transcend our earthly bonds. To facilitate the process of cultural conversion, we have prepared a new version of the great Soviet encyclopedia in line with the principles outlined by the paramount leader, to elucidate the values of ultra-visionary socialism. This will ensure that every citizen is mentally prepared for the creation of an intersolar nation. Oh, that was really good. Oh, there's another one there, too. You know what? After you do one of these, we're going to wait for to do that one. Oh, so also I do have the mod installed to make sure every single one is as accessible as possible. So I think this one you have to fail anyways. Abstract. A group of 50 subjects were transferred to the Gulag from the Gulag system to Facility X. They were placed in Compound X, a large mansion that could accommodate every need. They were supplied with food, entertainment, material, and never interfered with aside from the subliminal messaging for a period of three months. The subjects were allowed to do so as they pleased. Most went about their ordinary lives, occupying themselves with readings and social interactions. The experiment itself began on two weeks, or on week two, whenever. A subject found themselves isolated, we would play low-level white noise in the room, coupled with occasional subliminal phrases meant to influence the subject in taking certain actions. The entirety of the compound was equipped with speaker systems. By week six, all subjects had experienced the phrases and elected to stick together. By authorization on XXX, we began playing the white noise and subliminal messages even when the subjects were in groups. By the final month, the program would play nearly every day, up to four hours a day. At first, the subjects refused to comply with the messages, so we toned down the request. By week eight, we were no longer requesting actions, rather filtering in phrases from the propagandist's office. Out of the experiment's conclusion, the subjects were questioned, no changes in behavior or belief were noted, nor had their anti-revolutionary stance changed. Instead, all subjects reported weakness due to lack of sleep. Post-test, all subjects have been returned to the Gulag system. The compounds be repurposed for different experiments. Maybe we should try shouting so subliminal phrases at them? So, the United in Ideology be good to do next. Oh, oh yes. yes. Um, that's not bad. Let's come over here, too. Anything over here? Prisons? Oh, no hospital. Nah, what's the difference? Human Utopia. Mm. Remember this one? Yep. An isolated complex should be erected, containing sufficient material conditions for an optimal quality of life and a population of Gulag prisoners selected for an optimal sexual and ratio, ratio should be released in the complex. Sufficient to excessive quantities of food, water, medicine, and clothing should be provided, and a wider variety of leisure activities shall be made. No labor or core staff shall be necessary. Social trends arising in this environment shall be closely monitored, as will general changes in the prisoner's demeanor and actions performed. Can't get them all successful, I guess. We have a lot still here, so which means this is not bad. I mean, still have time. Since we'll probably invade um, the Germans anyways. Not bad though. Keep cutting it down. Close cities, my friends. United in ideology. Ooh. Transfer helicopters because we can? Why not? Alright, so 1970 stuff. Attack alleys. Yes, please. Improve anti-air. Do we need, do we need anti-air? Improve anti-air, yeah. And basic anti-tank. I forgot. It. That was one of the comments. Why, not, why do I not re research more anti-tank? Because I forget to. I literally just forget to sometimes. I don't, it doesn't really occur to me. But yeah, we definitely need to do that. Um, yeah. Cool. 
Rocket equation? No. Necessary material conditions. The German invasion set back a progress by an unacceptable degree, and one of the greatest weaknesses of our new Russia is the living conditions of its people. Infrastructure has been broken apart, cutting our citizens off from networks of guidance created by cities. Farms have been burned and salted, reducing our population's ability to fulfill the most basic of human needs. This is an unacceptable state for the Soviet superculture to be in. The individual units of the collective must be functional, for it to function at the full capacity, so we must uplift the lowest among us before we can uplift, uplift humanity. The broken links between por dissolute proportions of Humanity must be repaired on a physical and psychological level, and we shall never again allow ourselves to be divided again. And I want to read another one too. Observe the sculptural shifts. It's not enough to shape and mold the superculture. The sculptor must monitor his clay, particularly when he works with such materials as a human race, and ensure it is formed and fired properly. Conformity to the principles of the paramount leader is to be encouraged, while deviation is to be corrected. All active deviation is to be forcefully corrected. To this end, we shall deploy trained architects of the superculture. To monitor every facet of life for the collection of data. Obtain feedback on the efficacy of our methods and to detract or detect regresses within our ranks for prompt re-education. Those who disrupt the paramount leader's plans to disrupt the progress of mankind shall not be tolerated in any form. So that rewards rapidly improve. So now it's 11. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we definitely want to wait after that one. But, because I'm Military Academy, we are not alone. Excerpts from the Great Soviet Encyclopedia, 2nd edition, from 1967. This is a down solution. The realization that ultra-visionary socialism is destined to spread throughout the universe, as determined by the paramount leader Andrei Zidanev's intense study of the immortal science of ultra-visionary socialism. Originally promulgated as a solution to the Fermi paradox of Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, which observes the apparent contradiction between the lack of evidence of extraterrestrial life and the immense likelihood of its existence. Paramount leaders of Donna discovered that the most likely block to the advancement of extraterrestrial life to the interplanetary and intersolar stages of development was the persistence of backward stages of development. Feudalism, capitalism, and fascism on alien worlds, with the immortal science of ultra-visionary socialism only existing on Earth, brought to us by the unique genius of Mark Engels, Lenin, and Zidane. Only Earth holds the possibility of arising to a higher stage of interplanetary, intersolar, and perhaps even intergalactic development. It is thus the duty of the Soviet Federation, as one true embodiment of ultra-visionary socialism, to spread itself first across the Earth and then allow alien, then to alien worlds, suffering under the oppression of primitive barbarism. The Intersolar Soviet Federation. A future space-faring intersolar civilization founded on the principles of ultra-visionary socialism is vaccinated by paramount leader Andrei Zidane. Starting on Earth, the intersolar Soviet Federation will spread from planet to planet, liberating alien species from the oppression of feudalism, capitalism, and fascism. Its armed forces, the intersolar Red Armada, will obliterate all enemies in its path, assisting extraterrestrial workers and peasants in their struggle against their oppressors. It will educate the alien workers in the teachings of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Zidane, and ingrain in them a deep understanding of the immortal science of ultra-visionary socialism. Ultimately, the Intersolar Soviet Federation is destined to expand throughout the universe, ushering in a final universal Soviet Federation and an eternal aeon of uh, universal peace, prosperity, and liberty. Unity with our extraterrestrial comrades in a whirlwind promotion. Nikolai Kardashev, sat in his chair, watching his delegates promoted or spoted their choice for who would be the new People's Commissar of Energy. There might have been some suspense if there had been any other candidates available to choose. Once a final member of the Supreme Soviet had given up their vote, Kardashev had been elected as a new People's Commissar of Energy. He nervously walked to towards the podium, attempting to tune out all the things, both good and bad, before said about being said about him as he climbed the steps and took his position before the Supreme Soviet. Comrades, I think I cannot thank you enough for this gracious opportunity. I promise you that I shall not squander such a promotion, and that I'll dedicate myself fully towards ensuring the prosperity of a great revolution. Oh, my bad about that. <clears throat> Energy is a key to a civilization's potential, and we must harness this potential if we ever wish to spread socialism and harmony to the stars above. I will do all I can to facilitate our advancements towards the stars. Uh, or next step over civilization. I will do all I can to support the ultra-visionary cause. Once again, I must thank you all, and long live this revolution. Now, Kardashev was in, sat in his office. He certainly moved up in the world, but he wasn't sure he could catch up to his success. Kardashev had no experience running on an organization this large. He was going to need help. Kardashev took a photo from his stacked position upon his desk. If he was going to live up to the words he said in his speech, Kardashev was going to need the best and brightest minds Russia could provide. Everything's moving so quickly. Revolutionary te terminology. Pitch again. Hacked into the lumber with, with a mighty swing of his axe, the log split in twain and two pieces tumbling to the ground with a thump. He wiped the sweat from his brow. He'd been chopping timber for the entire morning and his muscles ached. Preparations for the winter were often a strenuous task. Perhaps he needed a break. Papa, 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 cried his daughter's voice as she came running to him. There's some people in the village. Uh, pa Pitch again, said his axe aside. Come now, Artyomova. What kind of people? Mm. Outsiders, she said. They want everyone in the village to come meet them. 
Pitcher getting greedy at his teeth. Outsiders always brought with them dangers and bad luck, whether they be raiders from the Euros or those liberals and Tums. All he wanted for his community was to live simple, peaceful lives in service to God, not troubled by the chaos that was the rest of Russia, but if they wished to talk, so be it. The entire village crowded around the company of Red Army soldiers. They watched these men with weary eyes, knowing well what their sword of often wanted. Their leader and officer of sword stepped forward and cleared his throat. My fellow comrades, under the decree of our paramount leader, Andrei Zadanov, your village has been liberated from the grip of anarchy. We are now under the glorious protection of the Soviet Federation. The day is but one step towards and forward to your true destiny, comrades, a destiny that we all share, one that lies beyond the stars, as for our superculture expands across this planet. It cannot remain here forever. The flame of ultra-visionary thought must spread across the interstellar space to unshackle the extraterrestrial from the chains of fascism, feudalism, and capitalism, and to usher in a superculture across the universe under the guiding wind or guiding wing of the Universal Soviet Federation. The glories above lie in waiting, my comrades, and with your help we will see them in our lifetime. The crowd didn't respond. An awkward silence, uh, an awkward quiet settled in the air. It was hard to come up with a reply to anything this man just said. Can I go back to my cabin now? Yeah. Observing cultural shifts. This would be good to do as well because it helps with poverty. Because this one helps well, slowly improve poverty while we get more GDP growth as well. So if you want to read this again, that I literally just read, please go right ahead, but it's up to you. You know? And we're going to need all that political power too to make sure we can acquire everything we have. So, uh, I'll say one more month. Why not? One more month and then, uh, beginning in J July, we'll switch our divisions over. Also, these look like airborne divisions and they kind of are, but they're only 30 combo with tanks. So, and getting tricky. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, you know what, since we're here, I want to do more industry stuff, but... Where am I going? We're going with that one. Because we can. Society redeemed. Ooh, we'll begin to slow... We'll get no, we'll get no proof, huh? Seven, yeah, I'm going to do it. Another joins the fold. There you go, cool. Society redefined. Ah, uh, oh, partial success. Valentin marveled at the prototype activated. There was a hum of energy, and the fighter in front of him went completely silent. Similarly, the white laser wiped out a radar system. Uh, without harming the dog sitting next to it, and the Satsti prototype effectively tracked and disabled three aircraft, forcing the pilots to bail. It was surprisingly silent, too, a small buzzing sound that was easily drowned out by the sound of the generator's roar. The prototype had surpassed all expectations he had for it, and the scientist next to him kept rambling on and on about the many scientific miracles that went into building it. Clearly, he was proud of his work. So, Kramat Aslanov. How much would it cost to make more of these miraculous weapons? They've clearly proven their effectiveness. The general expected some long-winded response from the overly talkative scientist, but instead he went deathly pale and went silent. That could be a good sign. The results, partial success. Conclusion. While the project said Sati, uh, prototype exceeded all expectations and passed all tests with flying colors. The officer overseeing the test initially advocated for further production until learning of the costs. The artificial rubies used to focus the later are prohibitively expensive and it drastically raises the cost of production. This alone makes Project Sasti unfeasible for mass production. However, the design is also limited by its massive power requirements, which likewise raise the design's cost. Juno Varenikov suggests handing the prototype over to the propaganda department on the basis of the prototype being absolutely marvelous. Sasti was simply ahead of its time. Oh, wait, you get more green positive supply consumption, huh? Okay. Add technology, laser anti-air systems. Laser S... Can we make that? It's not here. Uh, a a high-powered, solid-state laser mounted on an armored chest is designed to disable the electronics of aircraft's blind soldiers and destroy sensitive equipment with great precision. It's more than double the cost of a tank. Soft attack is 35. Armor is nine. Armor is 90? Defense is 4. We have to make these, don't we? We have to. Okay. Stoka. Experiments into a high altitude, high speed bomb armed with newly designed heavy cruise missiles or batteries of smaller rocket artilleries or artillery rockets should commence as a countermeasure to advance German interceptor craft and land based an new anti aircraft batteries. The bombers make use of newly developed advances in the field of aerospace engineering and have a variable geometry wing designed with a folding cockpit for ease of landing. Why not? Now this one. From the such small beginnings we have come so far, with the majority of our enemies defeated, the undisputed control of our lands has been solidified. Oh, look at that, great. Our f f fighting forces grow strong on the back of scientific discovery and innovation. Literature and language is putty in our hands, shaped to our benefit. Our brightest minds construct rockets and discuss the spread of socialism across borders and between the stars. And beyond the stars, our destiny awaits to show of the universe the power of ultra-visionary socialism. We shall complete phase one of the Comrade Kardashev's plan for civilization, achieving mastery over our planet, and prove ourselves the heralds of mankind's ascension. A superculture shall unite as one is, and as one, we go for it. Observing culture shifts. Junior Sergeant Volkov enjoyed his job. The people's coming started as science paid well. The hours were good, and the tasks were, his tasks were usually routinely, fair, uh, fairly routine and easy. 
He also enjoyed the human element. Volkov was a reserved private person, who with no family and very few friends, listening in on people for the commissariat gave him a sense of connection to the people he felt he would otherwise never have, even if they were total strangers. Some even grew attached too. One old man, a retired violin violinist, routinely played his instrument in a small apartment on the third floor of the complex. He was of little interest in terms of scientific observation, yet Volkov still listened in almost every day and came to love and depend on the old man's little personal recitals. When the old man finally died, Volkov felt lost deeply. He even broke protocol and attended the man's funeral from the distance, leaving flowers at his grave after his family and friends disappeared. Another subject Volkov grew close to was a florist who lived in one of the second floor apartments. He grew, he grew to love the sound of her voice on the phone to her mother, or drinking with a friend, or just talking to her flowers, which she treated with great care and fondness. Volkov wrote down her every idle move and the notes that fed back to the scientist for analysis yet one day, while hosting a party at her house. Volkov caught her disparaging paramount leader of Zidane calling him an unhinged lunatic. Volkov felt great mental anguish over this incident. Of course, he ultimately turned her in. While their directive was merely to observe and document cultural and social shifts in the population, they were also duty-bound to report regressive behavior and speech. She would do a short stint in the re-education camp and be back in no time, yet when she returned, she was much changed. She no longer talked to her plants or anybody for that matter, not her mother or friends. Volkov grew worried and then bored. After a few days of silence, he moved on to find a new subject. Zidane hears all, my friends. He, of course, he hears all. The rocket equation. Our journey to the endless stars is impeded by the technical challenges of reaching orbit. Even though regressive Germans and decadent American capitalists have made it into the space, and we must all strip their successes with less time. Therefore, we must gather every aerospace, academic, and engineer we can, and spur the nation on to the ultimate goal of a space-faring civilization. Spared loss, we'll be getting to build one in. We'll get there. Oh, and two? Oh, how do you get two and one? I remember back in the old days, we could actually invade Kazakhstan. Is Barati actually going to win? How? I didn't even mess with them off screen. You have no... Okay, no, they're not going to win. They they're, they're they have no manpower. Huh. Yeah, they're not going to win. There's no way they can win. If they win, I won't ask for likes on this video like I always do. I don't think they're going to be able to win. There's no way they can, they can win. There you go. Wow, there's a lot of members here. Take it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Toke Hale? The research is a marshal. The design bureaus have been prepared, and our first rocket will have. Uh, was well upon its way to being constructed. It also served two variable pr valuable purposes. First, development of the rocket technology will allow us to project power and ensure the primacy of superculture with nuclear weapons. Second, the development of spaceflight technology shall bring us ever closer to the stars and the ultimate progress of ultra visionary socialism. And at this point, as much as I love having a surplus and real growth, 40% here, it's time to spend a lot of money on making our military actually good again. So, there we go. Oh, we can't do that one. Okay, definitely fine. Uh, you guys are what? You guys are okay. Template 5? Yeah. It's alright. It's not a great template, but it, it'll work. It'll work for what we need. The rocket equation. Valentin Glushko spent hours making sure he was ready. He slicked back his hair with that jelly got for his anniversary three times, drank so much coffee that his eyes darted around nervously and made sure that his suit was completely free of creases. He checked his suitcase twice to make sure he had the necessary documents and ran a lint roller all across his fedora. His dog's hair wasn't going to be the one to ruin the big day. Valentin entered the office, exchanged pleasantries with Vladimir Chimol Chilomi, and sat down at his desk, pretending to do work until the office went silent. Zidane must be here. What would he say? This was a crackpot operation. Not some grand thing. Would he really give them the money to build a rocket? It would be life-changing, finally getting out of the office. Doing something, building something. His thoughts were interrupted by Vladimir Chelmolmi, walking into the office and motioning to Valentin to hurry up and talk to Zidanev. Valentin got up, feeling like he was going to vomit. This was it. He saw Zidanev. He never thought it would be so intimidating. My god, friend, Valentin, isn't it? The smile on Zidane's face was so wide, Valentin could help but ease up. That was a real authentic smile, right? Yes, yeah, says me. So glad you can make it, Valentin. We have plenty to discuss, but I'll cut right to the chase. I want you to build a rocket, to put a man in it, and take socials into the rest of the universe. Of course, you'll be provided with as much funds as you need. Uh, consider it a blank check. Valentin's mouth sat agape. He must be joking. It was a funny joke he had to admit. Perhaps a strange one, a bit surreal, but... Unless your silence means you would prefer not to? He wasn't joking. Zidane must be mad. <clears throat> no, no, comrade, I'd love to. I would, it would be my pleasure. Glad to hear, comrade Valentin. Now, would you like some vodka? What a strange proposal, thought Valentin. Yes, more people to join us, please. How's the economy looking now? Hey, not bad. Another joins fully. Yes. For now, let us be married. 1.72 billion. Not bad. Infantry is very weak, but we haven't fulfilled all the roles in here yet, so we'll see. If that, that's actually the right one. <sighs> Good. 
It's also sphere permeation. It's not enough to extol the values of the superculture as a concept. We must make sure that every citizen is made aware of our goals at an unconscious level, and that every aspect of our society is immersed in the values of ultra-visionary socialism. Minus 0.43 is really just tremendous. I'm, my gosh, I'm so proud of us. Admin efficiency would be good to get as well. Um, research facilities looking mighty nice. But let's talk about the next one. The stars of our destination, the Paramount leader was jumpy with excitement. Kardashev sat by the window, binoculars ready. Glushko and Chelmoy have put aside their petty disputes for the day, not wanting the other to stand alone as they've done aside on this day of all days. Three, two, one. A column of smoke erupted from the platform, and the mighty engines of the great metal beast roared alive and assailed upon that column into the crystal blue sky. Zidane was wondered, as, as he had on so many times sleepless night, what awaited a species freed from the chains of gravity, free to roam the galaxy, and how long would it be before the first meeting of fellow cosmic travelers? When they told him the rocket had made a successful orbital insertion, Andres Adonim did not reply. His eyes were turned skywards, but his smile wide, lost in dreams of distant stars. From the present to the future, to stellar future. Nice. Inconclusive. Uh, abstract. For the testing period, three subjects... Three seven subjects, volunteers with experience in the field of remote viewing, were incapacitated and brought to the site X. The subjects were locked upon grates tethered from above the floor for optimal recreation of German military emplacements and maneuvers. The subjects were given dos doses of psychoactive and hallucinatory drugs in order to bring about an anomalous psychological state. Brainwave scanners were positioned around their skulls and their heart rates were monitored. Conventional reconnaissance methods such as aircraft and knowledge collected from refugees and defectors were used to pinpoint the accuracy of the test subjects' predictions. The first subject, redacted, exposed, or experienced ne neurological breakdown following 80, 40 per second of the procedure. Following near-total mental collapse, redacted was transferred to facility X indefinitely. After recalibrating the operation, the second subject, redacted, remained somewhat stable through two procedures. Note the second procedure was not voluntary. The second subject was transferred to facility X following mental breakdown. The operation was again recalibrated for the third subject. Recordings of wartime operations and of stage conversations about war plans and troop logistics were played at random intervals around the third test subject to gauge their ability to wield extrasensory perception in order to look at the source of the recordings. The third test subject did, at points, respond correctly. It is unknown whether or not this is due to the test subjects predicting the sources of the noise or randomly moving their head. The third test subject successfully underwent two operations and reported back details of military emplacements and troop deployments, albeit vague and shallow details. The third test subject is being transferred towards the military facility in order to test a remote physical test on army proving grounds. For now, the rainbow body procedure is recommended for use on data expunge and enemies of the state. Progress. Oh, look at that. Kind of cool. He's got hair. Oh, the atomic cage. In the darkness of collapse, it seemed inevitable that we should never be restored on equal footing with nuclear powers, but yet, in the end, only Russian, Russians could master Russia, and marshal our vast resources to any meaningful end. We shall split the atom and demonstrate to the world our overwhelming scientific prowess. Not bad. We still get a surplus here, which is really actually awesome. Because after this, we're going to greatly expand how much infantry we're using. How are you winning? How are you winning? You shouldn't be winning with no manpower. It's not possible. How do you have more divisions? Maybe, maybe they will win. Oh, thank God we got my military factories off. Thank goodness. We need a lot. I want a lot of things here. I want some basic FSB artillery. And that's oh, that'll be the Kaim era program. Nikolai Kardashev had not been looking forward to this moment. One that he knew would be coming ever since the election as people's Komosov for energy. The Federation space program oh, had begun under the aegis of both the Commissariat for Energy and the Commissariat for Defense. As such, he would be expected to work closely with Vladimir Chilomai. Already, and as he had expected, Chilomai had begun speaking of how financial resources could be pulled or of how scientists could be reassigned of how quickly he believed they could be bring major projects, ones with direct military functionality to fruition at last. At uh, last, one, Kardashev had to fight, fight back. He wanted to, do, to see careful progress made in fundamental advances before any end-stage initiatives could be realized. <coughs> uh, and he wanted economic, scientific, and civil uses given priority. The look Chelomai had given him when he mentioned such uses was withering. But Kardashev would not back down. He was no longer just another scientist. He was a commissar like Chelomoy was, and he would make sure that his voice was heard. He would work as hard as possible and ensure that the program would could work sustainably to advance the cause of social science, regardless of what Chelomoy said. Kardashev suppressed a sigh, an action he knew would be repeated many times in the days to come, while he thought had Zidane if organized the program in such a way. As a venture between two major organs that could not help but have conflicting priorities, he could find no satisfactory answer. The struggle begins. 
Pyotr shivered in his bed. Master Kray Krushkov had mentioned never to stay up late on Thursdays, but what did he know? The master never kept his word to increase his super rations. In any case, he was on a mission. Young Michael had disappeared precisely two weeks of the day, and Pyotr wondered if he'd been adapted by someone. If the master didn't tell him what was up, he'd find out himself. It had been ten minutes since the last adult entered. By Pietro's reckoning, this was a time when the adults gathered. He began to move, barely even touching the ground with his feet. Bound by silent bound, he covered the space of the main lobby where he heard the adults gather. His eyes grew wide as he approached the window. The harsh industrial lights were on, and he heard urgent talking from beyond the glass pane. A meeting, perhaps? Leaning in, he heard the muffled words, We'll compensate you for the human losses, Kreushka. You must be mad. Two weeks from the last tr retrieval, and you must take another child. What on earth are you doing to them? The master's voice had something different to it. It sounded unread. He almost pained. Was he in mourning? We were building the revolution. Young children, too, must serve this goal. Now, please, step aside. I do not want to make this messy. Oh, and they're all l illiterate, are they not? Silence. Very well, then. We will teach him with the words of Marx. The door swung open, catching Pietro in the floodlights of the yard. A thick-waisted man with a false smile leading down towards him, his eyes gleaming like the magpies they often saw in the yard. Hello, little boy. How would you like to serve the socialist paradise, Pietro? Cold, uh, tongue-tied, only stared. In an instant, the man's gaze turned to coldness and he united the darkness outside. Take this one. We'll train him to agree, too. As black-gloved hands dragged him away from the facility, but for the factory, Peter heard beyond the sounds of his own cries the faint sobbing of the master echoing in the expanse of the lobby like a bird's call. Another child sent to a greater purpose, and his purpose will be great. Yeah, we'll vote for him. Why not? Doctor Tikhonovich sat across from the Paramount leaders of Donov, excited and hopeful. He could barely contain his smile as he imagined the prize that awaited after this meeting. It felt like a dream when he first sent out that memorandum about Nick, uh, Project Nightlight and the project the good doctor believed would make the Federation a force to be reckoned with. Doctor began the Paramount leader, his face stoic. I've read your proposal. Well, if I'm to understand it correctly, it deals with a ge genetic virus that could kill all Germans. Yes, comrade Paramount leader. That is a broad stroke. Specifically, it would target humans with elements of ethnic German DNA, transmittable by air, water, and skin contact. Non-Germans would be carriers, but unaffected. That is exactly why we're rejecting your project. But why jump to... Take Holnovich, insulted by the affront, because it is inhuman and it will kill innocents, but there are no innocent Germans. That's why, continues the Don, of ignoring the comment, I am placing you under probation, but sir, silence, you will be reassigned to another project, to the fringes, where so, maybe you can finally understand how much destruction these thoughts have brought us. You are dismissed. The doctor tried to open his mouth, but shut it, realizing it would be make, only make the situation worse. He stood up and left. We are better than this. A social superculture? From the beginning, small beginnings, instinctive car. We've outmaneuvered our reactionary opponents and regressive allies at every turn. Russia was broken into pieces, and now, in the crucible of reunification, we shall forge a superculture to stand the test of time. None shall stand in the way of our sentence. Now the capitalist decadence of the West, nor the oppressive fascists of Germany, nor the atavistic banditry of the warlord years. United in our goals, we march forward in a lockstep to the destinations that only ultra visionaries can perceive. For what is a single voice compared to a magni magnificent chorus? The workers bomb. Oh boy. Oh, we actually got this one done. Nice. Reunification of Russia. We gotta wait for that one. Uh, we'll just do these anyways. Academic base. Yay. Research facilities. Yay. Oh, we can wait to do that one so we can actually get more benefit from it, but whatever. Yeah, we should have waited. The worker's bomb. Uh, Professor Oleg Cherkasov unshifted uncomfortably in his seat as he glanced around the auditorium. There were only 30 or so men in the room, but they were amongst the finest nuclear physicists in the Soviet Federation. Abram, Abram, and Artyom Ak Alekanian. Oleg Fursov, Yuli Kar Karditon. And Yakov Zeldovich, all brilliant physicists of four former members of the Soviet Union, aborted an atomic bomb project during the early stage of the Great Patriotic War. Cherkasov felt almost an imposter sitting in the same room as these men, despite his own credentials and experience as a researcher. The mood was tense, and there was little talk amongst the physicists as they waited. They all knew what this gathering meant. Zadana wanted the bomb, and they were the men who had been chosen to build it for him. The idea filled Cherkasov with a mix of excitement and dread. Participating in a project of this importance would be a lifetime opportunity for Cherkasov, but the prospect of what the paramount leader of the Soviet Federation would do when he finally got the bomb terrified him. Just as the thought crossed his mind, the man himself entered the room, dressed in an all-white tunic and suit. Sporting his characteristic thin mustache, Cherkasov could not help but feel that Zidane looked ridiculous. Yet, as the paramount leader climbed the steps to the stage before them, Cherkasov clapped as emphatically as all the other men of science and reason. Reaching this podium, Zidane called for the crowd to quiet before he began. Comrades, I will be quick to, and to the point. I have gathered you all here today to address an issue which is of fundamental importance to the Soviet Federation. As you all know, the diabolical Nazi thugs across to our west possess a nuclear arsenal capable of destroying 
Communists at a moment's notice. If we were to ever defeat the Hitlerite dogs, the Soviet workers must be armed with a nuclear arsenal of their own. Our workers bomb to blow the Germans away. That is your mission, working together with all the resources of our great Soviet motherland made available to you. You must, w with great haste and energy, construct the workers' bomb. Comrades, you are not you are being entrusted with the fate of ultra-visionary socialism. Do not fail me. Chekhov and the other bomb makers rose, clapped, and shouted, Long live Zidanev. But uranium is not an optional uh, material in our nuclear experiments. Fortunately, our expansion in Western Siberia has granted us the resources we need. The mines, mines are on Omsk. will give us what we need to begin our investments into the science of the atom. Happy October, buddy. Happy October. Ooh, thermoelectric plants. That'd be kind of nice to get, actually. But we'll add more debt first. Why not? One point six two. That kind of sucks, but it's all right. It happens. Um, go away. Happy retirement. When Igor Kuchetov, the vice premier of the presidium, announced a surprise addition to the agenda of the meeting, many of its members feared what possible surprise they were going to spring on them. Perhaps some thought it was a scientific proposal that he couldn't wait to shove down the throats, knowing that his status as Zidane's successor made him immune to normal parliamentary procedures. Others, more paranoid, feared it was the beginning of a round of purges to prepare the way for Kurchatov's eventual takeover. As it happened, neither of those possibilities actually happened. Comrades, he began his voice trembling a little. I regret to inform you that I will be retiring from public life as soon as I am free to do so. The room collectively held his breath as he continued, stating that his age made his position as vice premier a burden that a newer, younger generation would be best sought to replace him in six months' time. His official retirement date. What double entendres occurred were obvious as Adana, sitting right beside him, looked nervously at the members of the Presidium. When Kuchatov finished, <clears throat> he was greeted with applause from the Presidium and Zidana, of course. The chamber even passed a resolution think, uh, with debate thanking him for service to countrymen and to the workers' movement. But few could ignore the new energy in the room as fears and ambition of men came towards the fore. Let's hope Zidana chooses someone younger oh, as his successor. An ultra visionary meeting. Oh boy. Oh boy. An ultra visionary meeting. Neither Nikolai Kardashev nor Vladimir Chelomoy knew when they entered the office of the Vice Premier Igor Kuchatov of the cataclysmic announcement that was, he was going to make. <clears throat> Typically, he did not meet with both at the same time. Their wildly different commissarial portfolios had a little direct overlap in state policy, and even when they saw each other, attention was focused. A portent had been simultaneously observed and understood, and just as it quickly it was answered. Kuchatov announced to the two men that he would in the very near future be announcing his retirement. The time would come for change, he had said, both for the Federation and for himself, as he had no intention of overstaying his welcome. Both Kardashev and Chilomoy immediately understood the situation in their own place within it. As both saw their opportunity to replace Kuchatov and thereby increase their influence of the Federation's direction, it would be a difficult task or case to make indeed, but the reward was well worth it. Working hard not to betray their intentions to the other or to Kuchatov himself, the two men offered their support of their superior's decision as well as their thanks for his long and successful service and departed soon after. Once out of sight, however, they began to move with increased speed, for the race was on, for the position itself, of course, but also for the security of the political support needed to obtain it. Ooh, I don't know. I want to do both. Nikolai Kardashev? chilomoy has been here for quite a while. Kardashev sounds like fun, but he sounds like really... Mm, I want to go with Chilomoy for now. I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong one to do, but... Diversified applications. The atomic bomb may be impressive, but it is the only application for nuclear technology. A nuclear power initiative has will have limited impact at first, but will provide many valuable returns in the future. Nice. Over the table, Kardashev had been both a scientist all his life, or at least, once he had been permitted to be one. So when the Federation announced the creation of the ambitious space program, he had supported it and became involved wholeheartedly. He was not sure if that was still the case. The catalyst for this change was the lunch he just left with Vladimir Chilomoy, one of the primary architects of the program as a whole. The man was undoubtedly a genius and one whom Kardashev had long idolized. He was also, as Kardashev knew, now knew, a man whose ideals were actively dangerous, not only to the space program but for the Federation as a whole. While Kardashev had proposed reasonable exploration, the leveraging of zero-gravity environments for research, and a general program of safety and sustainability, Chilomoy had almost immediately dismissed it. He and the Paramount leader as well wanted nothing but the most ambitious projects possible. Enormous capsules and stations, heavy lift rockets using the most dangerous and unstable fuel mixtures, and military applications, not only was such a course indefensibly reckless, Kardashev knew, but it was also wholly unsustainable in terms of resources, human, financial, and otherwise. Even so, Kardashev thought upon reflection. What was he going to do about it? Who would listen to him or support him if any objections were to be made? You know they had to find somebody who would, somebody with influence, someone who would help before it was too late. Impossible ideals, but the race begins. Kuchatov was retiring. Not only that, but he had called Vladimir himself to the announcement. Doubtless, a little hint as to who he wanted to take his place. However, Vladimir hadn't been the only one called. Nikolai Kardashev, that bumbling, nervous, yet simultaneously brilliant idealist, was his competition, and the race was on. Back into his office at the People's Commissariat of Defense, he strutted, giving nods to officers and staffers as he sat at his seat. The race was on, he needed to get as much support as he could. For Seba, Varnekov, and Zidanev himself were each to support. The committees we could bend his way. Even Simichasnitsy 
This enigmatic special circumstances the director could probably be reasoned with, leaving it as an easy climb, unless Kardashev could steal support. The old reformers had to be his sons, as a position had to be solidified. What seemed like an easy cakewalk was becoming more and more of a challenge, much to his annoyance, but it was, but it was Kardashev. Would he really be that much of an issue? Even so, slow and steady wins the race. Do you do anything there for that? No? I did before days? Okay, well, whatever. The ultimate weapon. What does every great power in today's world have in common? The ability to deliver nuclear payload to any point on the planet. We must develop the same capabilities. If we were to expand the superculture to the rest of the world and show the world that Russia is rebounded to surpass its greatest heights. Seated in his large office and exploring his commanding view over the Federation's capital, Igor Kurchatov, reflected on both his performance and his overall legacy to the Federation, and smiled. He had done well, he decided, tapping his pen on the latest stack of reports. <clears throat> oh... Oh, the cause of ultra-visionary solutions has advanced tremendously, and while the Paramount leader was, of course, the man most responsible for that advancement, he knew that he had been instrumental in helping him do so. But the time had come to hand over the reins and enjoy a retirement long deserved. Kuchetov had seen the looks in both Kardashev and Chelomoy's eyes when they had told them of his decision. It was, after all, why he had summoned them. Both had seen a chance to replace him, and he was sure that even now they are frantically moving to secure support. It will be the most interesting competition to watch, especially since he did not particularly care about the outcome. Both men, despite their vastly different outlooks, were visionaries. Both would hold the Federation into secure hands. Both would continue its journey towards the future in all fields. And at that thought, he smiled again. The race has begun. Oh my gosh. With the Penny's resignation of Vice Premier Igor Kuchetov and the advanced age of Paramount Leader Zadanov, a competition has emerged within the Presidium of the United Soviet Federation, People's Commissar of Defense Vladimir Chelomoy, and the People's Commissar for Energy, Nikolai Kardashev, behind the scene, vie for influence in the Presidium and within their sectors of the state apparatus that would consider their succession. According to the other minister, the path is one that shall see the Federation prosper and ensure the ultimate triumph of the ultra-visionary socialist ideal. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I don't know. We could try this one. Approach the Paramount Leader. Oh, wow. This is going to take so long to do. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. Nuclear Power Initiative will have a limited impact at first, but provide many valuable returns in the future, pretty much. Yeah. Ultimate Weapon. What does every great power... In today's world, have in common the ability to deliver nuclear payload to any point on the planet. We must develop the same capabilities if we're to expand the superculture to the rest of the world and show the world that Russia's rebounded to surpass its greatest heights, which I read before earlier, but whatever. Um, which better facilities? Nice. Now we can do the other stuff. Oh, okay. Well, it just decided to go bye bye, anyways. Minus point four is really good. Nice. 3.25, still not bad. Cutting edge. Wait, cutting edge. Oh, we jumped from mod research facilities over here. Oh, so we must skip through all these. These must be special ones then. Well, that's fine, whatever. How are we doing here? 1.47? Still not too bad. Keep training, keep training, train, 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 training. You guys are doing roughly okay here. Yep, looking not too bad. What do we lack in besides tanks? A laser SPA sounds so amazing. Attack helicopters? Could definitely use more of those. Transport helicopters, too. Oh, there goes the rock. Nice. Nice. Absorb the Yekaterinburg Design Bureau. The Yekaterinburg Design Bureau is one of the most effective scientific installations in Western Siberia. Established under the purview of Konstantin Rokosovsky, a talented general who is sadly unsuited to the demands of the superculture. However, his creation is responsible for many breakthroughs in the art of modern warfare and the technology needed for it. A more effective fighting force will be necessary to consolidate the bountiful resources of Russia for our own purposes, and the Yekaterinburg Bureau must be consolidated into the greater structure for the benefit of all. Looking ahead, Chilomoy swallowed. Not much so nervous of it down about where of what the future might hold. As of late, factualism, that old devil of all socialist movements, had begun to rear its ugly head within the communists of the United Soviet Federation, Zidanev. He sincerely hoped would recognize the potential dangers ahead. Comrade Zidanev, said Chilomoy, breaking the sacred silence that held him over the office, as the senior party official looking up from his paperwork, he smiled, his fleshy face spreading to a grin. Oh, Vladimir, welcome. Forgive me, I was lost in the day-to-day -day state work. Take a seat and make yourself at home. Chilomoy nodded and did so, scooting closer to the oaken desk. Comrade Zidanev. I'll be frank, the party is not as impregnable as, uh, to fragmentation as we would like to believe. I'm not here to make accusations against anyone. That is far from outside my purview. Chilomoy added quickly as a done frown. We must face the facts. 
Comrade Zidane, if you are not immortal, one day the town will come to seek you as a replacement, or seek a replacement for you. Zidane, not, of course, Vladimir. Don't think I can't smell the walls circling around us. So this United Soviet Federation is, well, a mess of division. Rest assured, we will ensure that the transition of power is as orderly as power, uh, possible. Chilomoy relied, uh, sighed in relief. Conversation continued late in the night. Chilomoy's heart waited a little lighter. The halls of power secured? Strongly Chilomoy leaning. Mm. Industry. Industry. So I guess. Oh, okay. So, so we can't really tell. I mean, yeah, this is. I guess Chilomoy is blue and the uh, Kardashev is pink, which would make sense. Duh. Are you seriously going to win here? Holy crap. So good, though. We get to December. I want to get to the next year. I want to actually go to war in this episode. It's taking so long to get there because there's so much reading. Wow. Wow. That looks really bad. And they're still attacking. Oh my gosh. Holy karate fathers. Nice. That ain't much but honest tanks. Um, you might as well just save it there. There you go. Sparts. Uh, we might only get literally one division of this, which is better than nothing, but whatever. My 39 combo with. Wait, was it 39? Did they change the combo with this? Two? Hmm. Organization's okay. Oh, no, I had too many there. Okay. There you go. That's not bad. Did they win? Oh my god, they actually did win. Oh, okay. I'm not asking for likes. But if you want to be about better industrial industrial please go ahead. Oh, we already had the best industrial expertise. Okay, whatever. Honestly, you won't be able to get done first fast enough, so uh I'll throw it over there. And that's already? Sure, why not? The mono campaign, huh? No, the drone's full. Great. Um, rebuild. Take the personnel. The pers personnel. Yeah. Now what do we have? Three. Oh, it's us have nothing. Scientific minds are not just highly educated and useful. The men who possess them are highly advanced thinkers and the best suited to lead in the days ahead. Most men do not adapt quickly to the new demands of the day, nor and our leaders must do it most of all. These men must be fellow architects of the superculture, doing each doing his part to make humanity transcend its limitations to build a brave new world. We have recently acquired several scientists from the Ekaterinburg whose experience in military applications of sciences will make fine additions to the collective, prepared to rehabilitate them as ultra-visionary leaders with expertise. We shall touch the stars and the ultra-visionary method. The Paramount Leader, uh, oh, and the future of humanity stands before a critical decision. Will we seek to establish ourselves as the dominant terrestrial power, eliminating the regressives of the Germania, and freeing millions of workers to participate in the new establishment of our new superculture? Or will we secure our citizenship by developing technology that would have been unthinkable only mere decades ago, and boldly transgressing the most optimistic expectations of the reactionaries and even our own scientists? The choice will determine the distribution of our resources for years to come, and reunification is going to be no half measures. Hmm. Dominant terrestrial power, technology, commitments. People's Commissar of Industry, Alexander Sheremetyev, sat calmly at his desk, looking over reports and various other paperwork. More and more modern money and labor was going towards the basic amenities as civilian production slowed down and was shifted more and more towards the government's back. Chilomoy had promised a solution, and that. <clears throat> uh, uh, and that was the set to meet him today. And so Alexander had been sitting at his desk, waiting for the, the clock to strike three for the past hour. Finally heard three rapid knocks at his office door. Come in, said Sheremetyev, straightening out the papers scattered across his desk and fixing his posture. The door swung open in the same Chilomoy, with his own neat sack of papers clasped against his chest. Comrade Sheremetyev, good to meet you, began Chilomoy. The other man simply nodded in response before looking up. Good to see you as well. I don't have a lot of time, so let's get down to business. What is it you want to talk about to me today? <clears throat> I've noticed that there's been more and more restraint on your commissariat as our territory grows, and the people expect more amenities. I have a solution that will make both our jobs easier, but I can't put it into practice until I'm chosen as Vice Premier. Can I count on your support? Cautious but intrigued, Sheremetyev replied, Well, what is it? I can't decide unless you give me something to work off of. With a thump, Chilomoy dropped the entire stack of papers under the table. Sheremetyev peered onto the first page, reading the title of the dossier, Visionary Social Commitments. Exactly what it says in bold. We will shift some of the burden of our industry to citizens through social engineering and other means. I've done the math and projections, all I need is someone to read it, and your support. To decrease consumption by five points yearly, should allow for significant increases in the efficiency of our civilian sector. Programs should allow for a comprehensive reshuffling of our industrial might. Um, I don't know. Sounds like if we spend more people, we get more stuff, maybe? 
will offer significant increases. I'm not really sure. The house of the science commissariat. Consult the, the army. Go to the army one. I mean, that might have been the wrong one for, for us to choose, but I, I don't know. 7% growth. That's not high enough. Are you kidding me? Vanquish daydreams. Chilmer was startled. Out of stuporifice. Stuporous daydreaming as his desk by the ringing of the phone. Sit, sighing, he sat up and blinked a few times and banished his grogginess before picking up the phone. He had been expecting a call from Sheremetyev, but he had assumed that with Sheremetyev's busy schedule, he would not be calling unless this, until this evening. But nonetheless, there was Alexander's voice on the other end. Good afternoon, comrade. I just finished reading your proposal. Quite creative, I must say. Well, that's good news. What did you think of it, then? At first, I was skeptical, I admit. I'm so used to working with machines. I'm not too well-versed in sciology sci or anything like that, but the numbers seem right and the concept is well thought out. If this would be put into action, well, I'd have to mock up a proper projection to get a real number, but efficiency would almost certainly prove so. Can I count on your support, then? <clears throat> of course, comrade. You proved yourself both honest and efficient. Have a wonderful day. Finish Sherman yet. Before hanging up, Chelmoy placed his own telephone down and turned back to his desk, smiling to himself. He leaned back into his seat and slipped into a daydream. One rung higher. Good. Oh, they got some more support there, too. Good, and the ultra visionary method, of course. Hey, transport heli is nice. Don't want to forget about all these guys, too. I just want us to build like crazy. We need more tanks, but we need more planes as well. You're next. We, I want these attack helicopters are way too good to not make. Way, 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 way too good. I hope we can peacefully reunify. These guys are looking not super strong, but at the same time, eh, they're not bad. It looks like about 20 combo with this. Cold days. Oh, are you? What? Uh, Soblin, son. What? We have to go to war with you? Come on, man. Ooh, we need those production units as well. I was hoping we could peacefully reunify you, piece of doo-doo. Why does Salvin not like Zidanev? What's wrong with him? A grand showdown, whatever. Uh, applied Zidanev's China. Hmm. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. The way for humanity is open. But poverty gets, becomes worse. Ah, uh, we're gonna go for it anyway. Screw it. Why should we? Uh, why should a title me me meddle with the ants beneath their notice? Germany's divided and weak. A tottering tower on the brink of collapse. Japan is much the same. The West is embroiled in their usual capitalist squabbles. We are above all this petty bickering. The creation and expansion of the superculture should be a concern above all else. This decision will, of course, have consequences. Consequences that are in inescapable. Reallocation of resources to expanding the new frontier will require sacrifices from the Soviet, Soviet people for the benefit of the whole, as outlined in the Great Soviet Encyclopedia. The obsolete governments of the West are bound to the Earth. We are bound for the stars. Oh, no, oh, they, they collapse. Uh, utter formality. When the most pro-military of the two candidates goes to a meeting of generals, he expects applause, accolades, cheers. All of these things are exactly what Vladimir Chilomoy gets in space from Vernikov. Well, Oplesnin. Simply smiles politely, gentlemen, you are several of the greatest military minds of our time, and beyond that, you already know what I'm here to ask for. Need I continue? With that, Chilomoy falls silent with a smirk and waits patiently. A passive observer to the rest of the meeting would have called the decision inevitable, which to an extent, in Vladimir's eyes, it was. You have our support, of course. You, only you can lead us into the future, of Aronikov spoke. Beaming as the others applauded, it was all easy, too easy, yet there was no opposition. No one raised their voice or debated amongst them in the slightest, or did anything to question or deviate. It was almost eerie how in sync the entire thing was, but Chilomoy put these thoughts aside. Of course they'd pick him. After all, he was his superior, their superior, and the clear choice. No surprises here. We actually might not be able to get this. Oh, crap. They have three. Uh, we'll see, though. So you got special circumstances? Science? I'll go with uh, foreign commissary next after this one. Now, what are we doing here? Nice. Escalation or preparation? We're faced with a momentous and serious choice. We could take it slow. This means a measured attempt, or attempted transition to our deals. In the meantime, we would be focusing most of our efforts on reclaiming Soviet land. Or alternatively, we could look at the future. We would be neglecting both of their people's quality of life and a little bit of our economy, but that sacrifice would be in pursuit of eventual completion of our true goal, the social superculture. Should we stay the course or try to move two steps at a time? Or once? Oh, it's future ways for no man. Hasn't moved yet, so... Eh, yeah, it might be okay. Glory to the ones who look forward. 
The banner of Lenin is over us. We've come to build happiness. With the young hands, we write the biography of the earth. Glory are the ones who look forward. Glory are the ones who march forward. Our path is from the present to the stellar future. Our path is from the present to the coming years. Youth is like a stellar rocket. Ascendant ascends upwards every day. Well, light clear tons and above the motherland. I'll do that one too. Where are we at with this? All over a billion. Growth is still not bad. I love the growth. Grow, 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 grow. And our soldiers are completely ready to go. Nice. I want more attack helicopters though. So where does that hurt us? Oh, it's minus, still minus, it's still 0.32. That's not bad. Not bad. Observer status extended. No, that's it. Okay, if you wanted that, please go ahead. Uh, 4.84. Ooh, that's not bad. Research facility is getting better as well. Functional administration. That one's actually going to go up to streamline bureaucracy, something like that. Functional administration. Hey, so let's see. That's great. Meaning of the Kelchia. So, functional admin. We're going to streamline bureaucracy, yeah. And well oiled machine. I'm glad to be able to speak with you in private, comrade Kelchia. Said Chilamoy, who sat down with the People's Commissar of Science. Such a powerful ally would be invaluable in Chilamoy's bid for Kochitao's position. We both know why you're here. What can you offer me that the other candidates won't? Why should the People's Commissar of Science support you? Well, I'm glad you asked. The People's Commissar of Science is an invaluable asset of the Federation. However, we're squandering that asset's potential by spreading it too thin. We need to focus your efforts and ensure that your efforts do not go to waste. I think the People's Commissar should focus on projects that strengthen our army and strengthen the revolution. Do elaborate, comrade. I'm interested in hearing what projects this would entail. I'm talking about things like rockets, alternative forms of weaponry, even mind control. If the revolution is to succeed, then we needed to obtain every advantage possible. There will, of course, be funding for mundane, more mundane science, but perhaps that type of thing doesn't really fit the ultra-visionary spirit now, does it? You're certainly intriguing me, comrade, I must admit. Could I ask you to repeat some of that again? I want to have written proof so I don't forget anything later. We bring the revolution brought to Mars by 1980. I need your brilliance to get there. Weapons, rockets, and mind control, you name it, we'll fund it. The revolution cannot succeed without cutting-edge military. I want every advantage possible. Keep spending more money. Great minds. Chelmoy looked over the unopened letter in his hands. He had made some bold promises to Mitzelslav Keldeshov. And he hoped that he would see the opportunities that the Chelmoy could provide. He took out the letter opener, extracted the paper, cleared the people's commissar of science, had written their document in a hurry, and Chelmoy had squinted to decipher the man's handwriting. Carmen Chelmoy, I have thought about our last conversation for a while. The position of Vice Premier is an important one, and I only wish for the best candidate to lead the Federation. That is why I have decided to support you for the Vice Premier, and you can depend upon my vote for when the time comes on the Presidium. Hope you uphold your promises. I ex ex understand you expect great things from us, but we also expect great things of you. Chillamoy leaned back in his chair, a smile stretching across his face. That was good news. Chillamoy was getting ever even closer to that cover of Vice Premiership. With the People's Commissariat for Foreign Affairs and Science on his side, the core pillars of ultra-visionary socialism were on Chillamoy's side. Great minds think alike, comrade. Yes, they do. And happy 1971, everybody. 19 days left, the Kuchitov resignation. It looks like we're going to be doing quite well here, actually, which is quite nice, actually. And we do have five divisions. Ooh. A whole fat five divisions. Which is very quite nice. Um, if you're over here anyways, just do this. And get ready to go to pound town on them. Because how much manpower do they have now? They have quite a few divisions, but we have way, 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 way more. Well, like about half a million. Roughly half a million. That's not bad for them. Um, and I do want to read about this next one. Project Chedapaka. A new heavy armor platform is to be developed for the purpose of creating an all-terrain heavy breakthrough vehicle capable of operating the scenery or scenario of limited deployment of nuclear weapons on the battlefield. The vehicle shall be equipped with a unique array of four tracks with low level ground pressure and sufficiently equal levels of weight distribution to aid resilience. The vehicle shall be disc shaped with a maximum armor thickness of 270 millimeters. The produced vehicle is to be tested in a variety of environments and deploys a heavy ooh, deployed as a <clears throat> heavy support tank for offensive operations against potential aggressors. Why not? Good and get some better tanks. Got plenty of motorized though. Plenty, plenty motorized. Hey, success with Operation Stoka. From uh, Pavel Stokoy. Prototype 100 has been successfully put through several test flights. While the drop noose, or droop nose, malfunctioned on the second flight due to a faulty electrical system, the error was quickly remedied, and the aircraft has performed without serious fault in subsequent tests. The variable sweep wings have proven to be highly effective in their role, allowing the bomber to use much shorter runway for takeoff and avoid the dangers of... <coughs> uh, 
behind the roll, allowing the bomber to use such a shorter run for takeoff and avoid the dangers of, st of stalls at high speeds. The bombers plan to be capable of carrying both heavy cruise missiles for standard targets and lighter rockets pods for softer targets. Performance-wise, the bombers met all parameters expected, surpassing Mach 3 and having a surface ceiling of about 12,000 meters, high enough to avoid German interceptors and anti-aircraft weapons. Avionics data suggests that the expected loadout will be well within its capabilities. The cost of developing such an aircraft has been extensive, as more than 600 patents have been filed based on the project alone, but as production scales as we will find more efficient methods of producing the necessary parts. Four more prototypes are being constructed for further refinement, and the Sukhoi Briro is preparing to move to full-scale production. We shall rule the skies. Great. Approaching for Seba. The building that houses the People's Commissariat of the Foreign Affairs was only a short walk from Chelmoy's office, and the bureaucrats and officials that resided within its walls pointed him towards Yekaterina, Third Seba's office without wasting time, his time. People's Commissariat Defense, what brings you to my office? asked Fritz Seba, shaking Chelmoy's hand before returning to her seat. I assume you've heard about Comrade Kuchitov's retirement? Yes, I'm fully aware of his retirement, I'm fully aware that why you are bringing it up to me. You want my support for you to become Vice Premier? Yes, Comrade, and that's why I've come to you before all the others. Your magnificent work in strengthening and upholding the ultra-visionary superculture has been nothing short of amazing. The project's junior commissariat have proposed continue to show promising results, and I do not wish to see them scrapped any time soon. Have you backed me as Vice Premier? I'll ensure ample support and funding comes to your commissariat so that you can continue for work however you please. Do you find that agreeable? For Sable is silent for a moment as she considered the offer. After what felt like an eternity, she finally replied, Yes, comrade, I, I do. I hope you can fulfill your grand promises. I shall not disappoint you, comrade. Not like all the others. The Dofar Rebellion. Well, good luck with that. About less than a billion. A surplus, that's not bad. We can raise war taxes as well if we really wanted to. <clears throat> but we're going to be building up an even bigger military if possible. I want a massive army. Because we're going to need against some Borman boys. Hey, United Kingdom exists too. So they got a lot of manpower, which is fine. They have a crap ton of divisions. Now, the Rex Commissariats themselves don't have that many divisions, but Germany proper? Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. And this is all the enemies we've got to fight. Including the UK. Oh, no. That is not going to be good. Yeah, it is not bueno, my friends. Oh, look at those guys. Goodbye. Oh. Can I vote yes? Oh, whoops. My bad. Oh, that's the face shooter. Why not? Sounds good to me. We'll go to war as soon as we possibly can, too. <clears throat> Which would be a good thing. 7% growth. Just like our space program going straight up, and inflation is less than 1%. Planet economy. Oh, I don't think I read that one yet. A planet economy or command economy is an economic system in which the entirety of economic output and growth is planned in advance due to account for the needs of the population of the country as a whole. Such a planification can be either centralized or decentralized. It can be decided either by a de dedicated council of experts or by the people in a participatory manner. Cool. Kubyshev. Yeah, keep making more roads, guys. Roads will help us lead our way to success. A last war. Well, we've been preparing for this, but it seems like the Siberian Socialist Republic has been too. In fact, the forces have been concentrating heavily on our borders for these past few days, and everyone can see the riding of the walls. Only two forces remain in Russia. That war shall come, shall be long and bloody, and remain in, in Russia. Uh, and the trap won't be the force of unified people once for all. We can only hope that's us. Salvin betray the ideals of, you know, socialism. Hey, nice job. Nice job, guys. All right. The bureaucrats trust. Jill and I wander the halls of the Pipel's Commissariat of Colt Central Records, approaching a glass enclosed room stuffed with bureaucrats. Knocking on the window, Chilamoy opened the door to see the bored looking men and women turn their attention to him. Comrade Chilamoy, how unexpected, said a man standing in front of a presentation, obviously the manager. Uh, we're in the middle of quite an important meeting on unemployment and federation, and oh, I'm sure you'll have enough time for that later, Chilamoy replied. And I just want to stop by and speak to you for a few minutes about some of my new ideas how to improve how to improve things around here. Well, the manager turned his eyes to the rest of the room, obviously looking quite interested in Chilamoy's presence, eager about something different other than their mundane task. All right, you can speak, but only for a few minutes. Thank you, said Chilamoy, taking the manager's place in front of the board. You may be wondering what I'm doing here, at the place known only for record-keeping and census-taking. I'm sure you've heard already I'm looking forward to becoming the next vice premier, and it is now my responsibility to gain support from all around the government, you included, which is why I decided to come up with a new innovation that will change your jobs forever. I call visionary management techniques, and it will rebuild this entire bureau, new methods of administration and bureaucracy, all to make your jobs easier. W with what, though? Uh, Tweety Man in the back interrupted. We've done everything we can to make things easier. That's part of our job. There's nothing left to improve uh, uh, improve pen and paper. Ah, oh, but that's the thing, said Chiamoy. I will do away with the non-visionary uh, pen and paper. 
and via computer uh, via computerization, machines will lead bureaucracy into a new age of wonder, and I'm sure your your jobs will be made twice as easier. The manager approached the front of the room, saying, "This is all sounds amazing, Carmen Chilamoy, but what is the time frame we are looking to have our commissariat modernized? Modern computers in five years' time, visionary management techniques are in use within the three years. Full modernization within a year, out of options." The president's vote was imminent, and soon the next vice premier will be chosen. It would be a close vote, too close. Neither Dakarship nor Chilamore had a majority, and the vote was likely going to be a deadlock. At the current situation, uh, continue, the succession's legitimacy would be thrown into question. As much as Chilamore disliked him, even Kardashev wouldn't be so foolish as to allow that to happen. None of the other voters would bulge, no matter how much Chilamore bargained with them. Every other option had been expanded, and Chilamore had been forced into an uninevitable position. He had to work with Kardashev. After 10 minutes attempting to find the right words, Chilamoy aside, he didn't really want to do this, yet he picked up the phone anyway and called the people's commissariat of energy soon. He heard Karish's voice on the other end. Government Chilamoy, what a surprise. I assume this is about the vote. Yes, Government, I'm, I'm calling to make a deal. You've piqued my interest in the letter. It had been a few days since Chilamoy had spoken to the people's commissariat of central records, and the committee had responded favorably, although he had yet to receive any confirmation that he was to be supported in the presidium. Sighing, Chilamoy went to check up with his mail one last time, hoping for any sort of response from the commissariat. What was once an empty mailbox arrow now held a small note addressed to him. Opening it up, it was exactly what he had hoped for. They were rather from the rather reclusive Alexei, Alexei Posnokov, no less. The People's Commissar had written a short letter, and reading it to himself, Chilmoy knew he had promised the right things. Karma Chilmoy began, I am impressed with what I've heard from some of the others in my bureau, and I'm even disappointed. I did not hear it from myself. Your ideas to improve the commissariat are like no other, and you can count on my support in the presidium. I'll be pleased to see you as our next vice premier, Alexander Polskonov. Pols the more support, the better. Meeting with Kardashev. Why are we meeting with him? What do you mean we have no majority here? Are you kidding me? Is this bugged? Probably not. Kardashev's office was full of things. Shelves of scientific literature filled his bookshelves. Graphs and ultra-visionary art were passed, pasted across every wall. And a large blackboard sat behind Kardashev. Chilamoy was fixing his eyes on anything in order to distract from looking at Kardashev's smug face. He knew that Chilamoy's deal was a perfect opportunity for him. And Chilamoy dreaded whatever he had to say. Chilmoy looked Kardashev in the eye and spoke, I have more both secure, but not a majority. For the sake of the Federation, I'm willing to compromise with you if you withdraw your candidacy. What are your terms? Well, if you're going to become Vice Premier, I want my seat in the Presidium guaranteed. Fine, what else? I'd like to nominate your replacement as People's Commissariat of Defense. Uh, that's absurd. Why should I throw away? Sounds like you won't be having my support. Shame. Chilmoy felt his blood boil, and he almost walked out of this cramped, over-decorated office right then and there. However, for the sake of the Federation, Chilmoy had to agree. I accept your term. Before Kardashev could respond, Chilmoy stood up and left, slamming the door behind him. I think the meeting went well? I think? Well, we'll see. No guarantees. No guarantees, of course. Uh, came back, come back over here. We still have a lot of stuff to research over here, too, that I haven't touched yet at all. Yeah, like, like really basic anti-tank? Look at that. Nero victory. Oh, human utopia project inconclusive. A population of 20 males and females, designation uh, none, were placed in a facility X. The compound built over the last three months in complete secrecy is a small town isolated by walls. Through a complex system of tubes and pistons, we are able to supply the town with virtually endless food, clothing, and entertaining or entertainment materials. No labor is required in facility X, but all inhabitants are observed through the cameras and wire tapings or tappings. Throughout the experiment, we gradually introduced more and more subjects of various ages and genders. The experiment went on for six whole months. Result Observation Revealed that the subjects voluntarily participated in social activities such as working out, <clears throat> reading, feeding, and engaging in sexual intercourse. Contraceptives were also provided. However, as the months went on, the strange trends began to develop. Cliques had formed between subjects. Uh, people refused to eat or sleep without the presence of their group. Vicious fights over females ensued if three children were born. None of their mothers or fathers displayed caring, leading to the death of one in month five. Certain individuals refuse to join groups and in turn being ignored by everybody, existing as ghosts whose activities only include sleeping and eating. Towards the final month, most individuals refuse to leave their side of the group. Unsurprisingly, most subjects occupy their time with leisure activities. Conclusion, with no conclusive data was found, people enjoy their stay and we had to forcefully remove some of them back to their gulag to continue manual labor. Post-test, the compound has been converted into a barracks. The surviving children have been placed in an orphanage. The adults are reintegrated or re-injected into the gulag in the same group. Entertainment and sex... Who would have guessed? Narrow victory for Chilamoy. The day had arrived, and long last, after so much support building, influence peddling, and maneuvering for positioning and butt kissing, the decision as to who would fill Igor Kuchatov's position as successor to the paramount leader would finally be made by the presidium as a whole. As each delegate submitted their vote, and as each record 
Each was recorded. Tensions within the chamber rose. Both candidates, Nikolai Kudashev and Vladimir Chilomoy, were through much of the process possessing of nearly equal support, and it was not until the very end that the winner was declared. And when it was, by the narrowest of margins, Chilomoy was declared the victor. So chosen. The Paramount leader gave support to Chilomoy's elevation as vice premier to the compliment, a compliment, accompaniment of much fanfare from his supporters and other partisans. Kudashev himself was considerably less enthused, but all would later agree that he conducted himself with respect and dignity, accepting his defeat with expected grace. He also, as the meeting came to a close, proposed the final decision of the night, the elevation, to Chilomoy's now vacant position of the People's Commissary Defense, of skilled logistician, organizer, and former WRRF general. The decision in the affirmative was quick. It remained to be seen, however, Dmitry Ustinov would prove as successful in the office as his now much more prominent predecessor. The state will remain secure. I do apologize if we didn't go that way we, we wanted us to. Also, I, I apologize for speaking really quickly, because at this point, like, holy crap, we're over an hour, and we haven't even gone to war with Brat yet. Like, come on, man. But, Project Trezubets, an experimental proposed triple barrel assault rifle, shall be manufactured and tested as... <clears throat> a potential general purpose or squad support rifle. The proposed triple barrel design combined with a 90 bullet magazine is projected to provide a fire rate of 1400 to 1800 rounds per minute. Nearly three times that of our current Zotaus developed Kalashnikov line of rifles. It deemed viable. The Trezubets, the rifle, shall be given a formal designation and be implemented fully into the Red Army's infantry weapon. Even stars burn out. Vladimir Chilomoy had finally gotten two things he wanted. He, uh, the seat of the vice premiership and the moment alone with the paramount leader. As a cold embrace of the night enveloped the balcony and the two took to their chairs, he let out a small smile. You know, it's an understatement to say how elated I am. Rest assured, I'll be doing my best to bring the USF to new heights, and I have plenty of ideas for how we can continue to progress forward. Silence for a few moments, but as Andrei Zadonov looked at him, and for once the man's age hit Chilomoy like a freight train. The Paramount leader was dying, Andre was dying, someday Chilomoy would be the new Paramount leader, someday Vladimir Chilomoy would be alone. And for a moment, as he looked at the haggard old eyes of the Paramount leader, a single pang of sorrow eclipsed it. His dreams, his aspirations, everything, even with all the advances they were looking into, all things died. And that included the Paramount Leader himself. Nothing could change that, and nothing would change the fact that Andrei Zidane would one day be in a casket with Cook Chilomoy at his funeral. Perhaps he'd say kind words with Straw for once. Perhaps he wouldn't know what to say. After a few passing moments of p paused eye contact, Zidane waved his hand slowly, clearly knowing what was on his mind. Well, go on. Hopefully we do well here. I can't imagine we won't, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, let's do some military austerity now. That would make the most sense. What are the losses like? A thousand to seven thousand? Not much yet. Where are you guys at? I want you guys to go in. Nice, not bad. I don't think I think they're out of equipment though, aren't they? Ten thousand losses, not bad, not bad. How fast are you guys actually here? Three kilometers is pretty bad. Yeah, but it's all right. I want more attack helicopters though. Oh, I love attack helicopters. I'm a sucker for attack helicopters. I'm just never gonna have enough. Or tanks. Or uh, Heavy SP artillery. So all that stuff is done. We'll get that one next to us. Fine. Nice. Good job, random dude. Well, I guess not really random. They all know what they're doing here. All the way, friends. All the way to Magadan, basically. I can't believe we have over a million manpower. Holy crap. Actually, these guys are only 20 combos, so I, I, eh, I'll screw it. Don't use that one. Um, so, what? we will not be using 20 combos when we attack Germans, or Germany. So, we, we will be using 40 combo with it. So, right now, supplies are probably really bad around here. So, yeah, we're doing okay. We have up to 26 divisions left. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, did I not vote? Oh, maybe I forgot to vote. Nice. Very good. Let's see if we can actually do that and then take out Germany and call it a campaign. The Don of. A lot of fun. Poverty reduction might be a bit extreme. But maybe that's just me. Hey, better APCs. Hey, good job, guys. Sounds good to us. Throw the two more, because I want to throw them on the infantry as well if possible. We don't have anti-air, which is probably a big old mistake, honestly. Early anti air, that's not very good. We'll see, though. We'll see. Nice. So, you. Go right there and go right there. Should do okay with that. 
here with these divisions. Um, I'm probably going to set them down south so we can just do the best they can. Just absolutely trying to destroy enemies. We got 160,000. That's not bad. Yeah, holy crap. They're almost completely dead. We got the Sauds. Now the Saudis. All right. 0.94 goes straight up. We like that a lot. Nice. Very good. Daily social support. Holy crap, that's a lot of extra social support every day. Even though it doesn't look like it, but that's all right. Just go straight for Akutsk, Lanuda. Let it go all the way over there. Nah, that's not bad. That's good again. That's good again. Good, good, good. good. Better anti tank, thank you. Head down south. Tanjanika? Why not? Yes. Got a lot of council members. 242 days is kind of extreme. But we'll see. We'll get there eventually. The Soviet Socialist Republics. Hey, we got more surplus now. 41.8 billion, not bad. Temp stack hike and that one. We really start cutting this down a little bit more, but whatever. Why are we taking so long to build stuff? This is sad, and they, they, they should be ashamed. Taking so long for this. Quarter million have died. We've lost 26,000. That's not bad. But ask? Yes. Oh, if you're, oh, if you're about increasing the admin efficiency, please go right ahead. That's Nikolai Gobov is really good, though. We live in the managerial age, after all. Nice. So good. Six percent growth, not bad. 0.94, not bad either. But to see power in Iraq, all right. Not bad. 1.57 billion now. Good. Factory complexes. Ooh. Now go to modern industrial facilities. Another joins the fold. Oh, you betcha. For now, let's be merry. We actually should get this developed as well. Political interference. Professional army would be nice. It'd be very nice, actually. Takes so long. 270 days? Nice. Come to Cheetah. Barborzia. Killock. There you go, just go through there. Yeah, how have we not how have we not won yet? This makes literally no sense. How are these guys still alive? Now that literally makes no sense. Even Iran is dying faster. You guys are suffering too many losses. Come over here. Actually, you're going to get pounded here, so I want you to do that. That'd be better. 60 is not bad. Hey, more supplies is really good, though. Sir, would you like to get Cheetah? Come on, man. Give it up. You're done. Almost one and a half billion, though. It's really nice. Really nice. One v one, you should do pretty darn well. Good resource extraction. Why not? Because you can. Because we can. Keep building, building, building. We need more hospitals. After this war, we definitely need more hospitals. There they go. Take Magdagachi. Should be able to win there immediately. Then. Oh no, wait, that's Ch Chumakan. Magadan is. Up here. Up. Oh, we get him. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Okhosk. Not bad. All right. Let's see what we can do about this. The Soviet Federation unifies Russia. While Russia has long stuck, been stuck in a backward state and have been fighting warlordism, today that comes to an end as Andrei Zadanov proclaimed the Federation of the Soviet Federation. Despite being a representative of the old regime, having secured or served as foreign minister under the Bukharan government, Zadanov espoused the need for new Russia, hence the new name, speaking in Supreme Soviet in Kubishev. Uh, the self-proclaimed paramount leader proclaimed the need for all Russians to unite under the Federation's banner to march boldly forward in the future. Zadanov also stated support for the sciences extolling the values of technological progress and the need for bold decisive action to uplift humanity to become an interstellar race. That's the future come already?
to last forever. The morality of man. The great and terrible tragedies befall the Federation today. Earlier today, their beloved uh, Paramount leader Andres Adanov suffered a very episode of uh, cardiac arrest during a minor political meeting in the Kubashev and had to be hospitalized. The doctors, some of the finers of our Federation has to offer, have confirmed that there's no foul play involved, and that the heart attack was merely a symptom of the Paramount leader Adanov's advanced age. Unfortunately, however, it does not seem that our Paramount leader is making a recovery, and the doctors do not seem confident that he'll live for much longer. Oh, crap. They have assured uh, that they will continue to do everything they can to improve his condition, but it's clear that Comrade Zidanov lives on borrowed time. Preparations will have to be made in the event of his capacity to ensure that the flame of so ultra-visionary socialism continues to burn bright even in the absence of the mind, great, brilliant mind who created it. The Paramount leader's successor already decided his hope that the transition of power would be a smooth one, but the ultra-visionary revolution will never be quite the same without him. This is calamity. <gasps> Zidanov, Mario, Mario, I don't like calling Mario, but oh no. Oh, poverty's getting worse now. Oh, better industrial equipment though, that's good. But why is poverty getting worse? Oh, it's because of all the growth. Or all the uh, in integrating, that's why. Point, oh my gosh, negative real growth. An ultra visionary visit. Leaving the hospital, Vladimir Chilomoy struggled to con reconcile determination with a shock. <clears throat> he knew now that Andre Zidanev was not long for this world. Someone in the dark of night and driven by Zidanev's bodyguards to the hospital, he fought to keep himself composed when he saw the man. Zidanev was a figure who had always been larger than life, dominating every room he was in, and now he looked sick, old, weak, and for the first time ever. Worse, he could barely speak, could barely leverage a talent that, along with a visionary mind he had, been more than anything else responsible for the Federation even existing in the first place. But he had struggled through, and through his words were halting, uh, those words were halting, Zidana spoke to the Chilmoy, told him that he knew he was going to die, told him that he had to keep the vision moving forward. Chilmoy, I have been quick to pledge to do so. To pledge to see his vision, leader's vision through to its conclusion, it was what he knew Zidana wanted to hear, of course, but it was also his firm belief. He had been an orthodox and ultra-visionary for years, and he had no intention of deviating now in the moments of the greatest peril for the agenda as a whole. And though uncertain for the future, shaken and struggling as he still was, Chio Moy knew he would fight to ensure that the promise he made was uh, properly kept. The future must be secured. And this is taking way too long to make more divisions. That is ridiculous, and it, you, you should feel really bad, game. Uh, Chuikov. That's fine. It's just we have the other guy doing other stuff anyways. An ultra visionary and orthodox succession. When Vice Premier Vladimir Chilomoy had heard in his night that the bodyguards knock on his door, he had known for them the urgency by which they did so that something <clears throat> important had happened, and it had Andrei Zidanev was dead. Things had moved very quickly after that, indeed. In order to secure and proper, in order to succession, nobody wanted to repeat the end stages of the old republic. After all, in the late morning, he found himself standing in front of the assembled presidium. He had put some words together to provide to the delegates following his official elevation to the office of paramount leader. He spoke of unity within the Federation, about the greatness of the man who had led them to this point, and about how all men had to trust their vision to somebody else to be carried forward. He pledged to do so. The applause was, of course, unanimous. It was also, Chilmoy could tell, enthusiastic. As a man clearly believed to share Zidana's ideals and desires, he knew that the delegates were confident in his ability to continue the path shown to him by the departed icon. A small faction was clearly unhappy, but they mattered little, and would soon have little to no influence at all. As paramount leader, Chilmoy stepped down from the platform. He kept his outside expression solemn, but inside he was smiling, knowing that his mentor had passed on with the surety that his vision would be continued. The future is clear. Is that it? Is that how you actually look, huh? Okay, now that's looking so much better than it was earlier. Oh, our social credit rating improved. Or just credit rating. Hey, intermediate, not bad. Very nice. Why did the, only the socialist states get better credit rating? At least this state. Like, all the other times we play as people who do really well, and then we can't, there's no stuff. But a clear vision. The Vladimir Chilmoy sat on the chair he had spent years standing in front of. The Paramount leader's chair, Zidana's chair. His chair. He was still with it, in truth, processing the change. Ever since his elevation to vice premier, he had, of course, known it was coming, especially with Zidana's declining health, but knowing and experiencing were, as many had told him, very different things. So far, it had coped with a shift through the focusing on other things. Things such as workmen carefully and respectfully packaging Zidana's personal effects or, for distribution to state or family museums, as indicated by his will and final wishes. It would not be long before he had moved his own physical effects to replace them. There was much more space to fill, physically and metaphorically. Turning his mind to the future, Chilmoy swiveled his chair and looked out of the enormous windows. He was a pres of the Federation's steward now, trusted with ensuring that the ultra-visionary agenda continued to along orthodox lines. There was so much more programs to sponsor and so many more frontiers to explore, and the town was about, it was about time to get to work. The Donna's legacy will endure, which this is the end of this, but let's see if we can take out the Germans. Project Cherapaka, partial success. I am writing to inform you of the conclusion of Cherapaka and our hope to move into the production stage. Our attempts to work with the specifications given has been far. A resounding success, but it's some promise. 
The vehicle suffers from many of the same issues that the German tanks captured during the last war, particularly the Tiger and Mouse, Cherpaka. Solves a number of problems that those vehicles suffered from, particularly the unreliability of the drivetrain, excessive fuel consumption, and overall is able to maintain a higher level of performance for longer. However, a number of other problems have emerged as a result of our solutions to the original problems. The leading line, or the lead lead lining of the crew compartment for the four-track train tri drive train, and the unusual disc shape have resulted in the need for us to establish a completely new production line at the its Hevsk plant to create the prototype. Maintenance has also been an issue, as access to the mechanical portions of the tank is limited to the design of the tank and makes field repairs effectively impossible. In spite of the difficulties, the vehicle has performed quite well in trial runs by our personnel and demonstrates runs for our military procurement officials, proving highly resistant to artillery fire and to rarely break down. It is not suitable for mass deployment as it lacks mobility to contend with modern battle tanks, but it possesses the armor and firepower that allows it to take on anything lighter, and will certainly fill an important niche in the military. A satisfactory result. Project Threzubit's success. The testing stage of Project Threzubit is concluded, and the results have far outstripped our expectations for the rifle. Senior Engineer Korobov and his team have overcome the anticipated problems related to the feed system, having implemented an innovative method of allowing each barrel to be fed by the same magazine, requiring the operator to use a single 90-round magazine instead of one for each individual barrel. The rifle can also be fired ambidextrously since the cartridges are ejected behind the magazine. The rifle's rate of fire meets projected expectations and approximately three times faster than our current equipped Kalashnikov rifles and is chambered in the same 3 or 7 62 by 39 caliber. The primary issues encountered in testing resulted from the increased recoil due to the greater amounts of propellant used in each pull of the trigger. The rifle is also heavier than our current standard issue rifle and presents a considerable logistical challenge by expending three times as much ammo as a standard Kalashnikov. However, if these logistical issues can be overcome, the rifle will serve as an excellent frontline infantry weapon. Both Korobov and myself consider this to be an unmitigated success, and the Threzubits team is ready to implement full scale industrial production in the prototype pending the Paramount leader's approval. Production approved and increased ammo quotas at the Mullet plant, more particular power. The new uh, standard assault weapon will give more, way more attack and defense. Or no, no, just, yeah, way more attack. A lot more attack. Wow. A little bit more defense, way more supply consumption and more cost, or limited adoption. We must conserve our bullets. No, no, no. Full skill adoption. Well, everyone, I figured, you know what? Let's at least try it. If it doesn't go very well against the war against the, uh, well, the Knights Pact. Well, we'll see what happens. We don't have a ton of divisions, but we've, like I said, just gone to war. Hopefully we can do well, and Russia has just declared war on Germany. There's no turning a step back now. Russia's final war. Very nice. Uh oh. Keep going on in. Don't you dare stop. We literally don't have time to stop. The more territory we take, the faster we can capitulate Muscovine, which would be pretty much better for everybody. So yeah, let's 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 not stop, guys. And or and or get encircled. That would be huh. That'd be like a really bad move to take. Well, this out move was kind of okay. Oh boy, they're really getting a lot of the soldiers on the borders now. Again, to be a little worried, we don't have a ton of equipment either. But hopefully the more we take, the more factories we can make. We can, we're not even making any jet cash right now. Holy crapola. We lost 12,000, we killed off almost 100,000 at this point, which is pretty nice, but, you know, not, not nearly enough. St. Petersburg, go get the immediately full, uh, basically factories. Quite literally, just factories. We need the factories really badly, so. What you guys going to do? Yeah, you guys should be fine. I don't want to force the attack because equipment is extremely limited, but 65 production units, just it's still not enough. Let's see what happens. We killed off almost 170,000 some enemies. Not bad. Obviously, making a circumstance would probably be the best thing to do, but still. Oh, we overran a couple more divisions. They're at about 200,000 losses now. Not really much in the term, in the big old grand scheme of things, but hey, Leningrad is ours. One more production unit. Did we get a whole factory? We did get a whole another factory. Not bad. Ooh, they are attacking us quite a bit, though. Hmm, not bueno. At least we've not been naval invaded just yet. They will eventually invade us, though. All right, so with that in mind, you guys want to hold. They're going to attack us quite a bit. You guys hold as well, because you guys are precious. 
They're oh so precious. And whole, because they're going to start attacking us like... Well, a little crazy. Oh, but I'd love to get Mos Moscow. Hey, but if you want to go better agriculture methods once again, please go right ahead for this bread we thank thee. Oh, we lost another, another factory component. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, go on in, guys. Be more than fine. We want Moscow. And by God, we're going to get Moscow. Yeah, they're definitely going to be attacking us like crazy. We lost 118,000 versus half a million already. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, and then there's the Norwegians, which I guess we're not at war with yet, huh? Please don't lose there, and you're not going to, which is good. Very good. Yeah, they want to attack. That's fine with us. Use our anti-air as well. Wow. We're demolishing that IFV. And we still have a surplus. It's very nice. Ooh, better engineers is very good, too. And let's get some more recon. I think overall we're doing relatively okay-ish. Yeah, no. Not today, son. Not today. Overall, could be going a lot worse. Could be going better, of course, but could be going a lot worse. Find them Brits, kill them off. Well, they've already taken 600,000 losses. Almost 700,000 if you think of just the German side. Ooh, that, ooh, that is over a river. That is not ideal. Yeah, let them, let them keep attacking us for now. It's fine. Nice. Good, good, good. And here come the Norwegians. Actually, do we have a land border with them? I hope. No, yeah, we do. Hmm. I mean, the more smaller attacks they do all the time. I mean, it's it's seriously costing them. Maybe not a whole bunch, but it's seriously costing them. What should we do with more of their political power as well? I do apologize, like, once again, for kind of speeding through some of the readings earlier. Just that I don't have a lot of time at the time of this recording. So I'm devoting literally all my energies to one video for right now. So, yeah, it kind of sucks that I have to do it like this. There you go. Just kill them off. As best you can. And then we'll try to get Moscow, and then hopefully capitulate them soon enough. We still have Leningrad, which is nice. Oh boy, I don't want to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that, so. Yeah, I'm sorry, but no. Just no. Um, they're going to still attack us, but I'll show you the casualties once we're done here. Well, everyone, January 3rd, 1974, and this is where we ended up. Honestly, like, after the whole, like, stagnant front line, just a few small pushes here and there, and the enemy's still attacking us. We've done really darn well for us. Now, they still have how many divisions? Up to 120. We're roughly about the same as them. We've only took, actually took about 30 million casualties, which is really good. We've killed off almost 4 million of them, though. So, I'm feeling pretty good about this campaign. And we did relatively okay up here in, uh, in this part of Norway as well. I'm not too concerned about that, but, like... As long as the enemy keeps attacking you, I feel pretty good about this, so... But let's get at least at least four million, and we got there, and let's end the war. Com demand a complete German surrender because we don't want to get nuked just yet. Uh, cool, and the Treaty of Riga. Our staggering advance into the lands of the Reich have stunned the globe, the Germans especially. The Germans have approached our government with an offer to avoid nuclear war. The Germans are prepared to accept our Eastern European claims on the condition that Germany proper will be left untouched by the treaty. Tell Germania, we accept. Cool. And Zdanov would be very, very proud of us. <sighs> very, very good. Let's cede all the lands to us, hopefully. Hopefully get the uh, Ostland or the Baltic countries as well. But my god, this is laggy. And we're still trying to do Project Molinia, so... Overall, not bad. I'd say overall for this campaign, it's been a lot of fun. I did not like this episode being this long. There was just so much reading, and it feels... At least to me, when I read, went through this earlier, through this video... I feel like Zidane just dying suddenly... It doesn't feel right. I mean, I personally would have, I mean, it's, it, it could happen, but with a heart attack and stuff like that, but, like, I, I would have preferred if he could, like, retire the premiership and kind of transition power um, with Chelomoy or something like that, just to make sure that we can set ourselves up for the future at once TNO2 comes out, if it ever does, um, which I, I don't know how old I'll be whenever that comes out, but, you know, I, I just wish Zidane would have not just died and been forced to do the whole uh, Kar Karbyshev uh, versus Chimoy, Chilo Chilomoy, um kind of struggle. I just didn't like that. It just feels a little forced. I mean, maybe in the future, uh, if Zidane ever gets a rework, which maybe he will, maybe he won't, um, that they could just like allude to it like, oh, he's having heart conditions, or he's getting older. He's not feeling too well right now. He needs time to rest. So, oh, Jimmy Surrenders, yay!
Russia reborn. Nice. Also, do we have any more divisions here? Oh, nice. We're going to do the fate of Viborg as well. Uh, and then the city of Viborg was won by the Soviet Union back in 40, when the Red Army troops triumphed over the Finnish troops. Although the city was eventually retaken by Finland during the Great Patriotic War, many of our journals believe that with Leningrad back in the hands of the Federation of the Soviet Socialist Republics, we should put some distance between Finland and Leningrad and retake what is rightfully ours, of course. She would be able to win, and we win immediately. Beautiful. Exactly what we like to see. Um, you three go right there. Even though we're pretty much done with this campaign. Yeah, overall, not bad. I We are using the second West Russian War mod, of course, like you, you can probably tell, if you know about that mod. Also, I wanted to see this. With all this coring, look at how the growth has gone so badly. Oh my goodness, negative 12%? Oh, oh man but what, what happens after negative 12 percent but yeah we were actually able to take Kazakhstan out and all of most of well, most of Central Asia not all of Central Asia but most of Central Asia and we got blood stock fairly and squarely so overall not bad move the Russian capital now the Russian people finally triumphed over Germany it is time to decide the future of capital of Russia much of our government has supported the move to return the capital of Russia back to Moscow but there are a great deal of people who believe that we should keep the capital here in the Federation of Soviet Socialist Republics Kubyshev third Rome Oh, the third realm, why not? But other than that, eh, hey, growth is back to normal. Cool. Um, surplus is quite a bit less, but that's alright. But like I said, I, I just wish Zidane didn't die. I wish he could, like, retire and then work on his books, thinking about the future and overseeing what the future could hold, especially for the incoming next generation of Russians. I think something like that, at least in my personal opinion, would be really very cool to see, but obviously I'm not a dev, and I probably never will be. I just literally have no time, but I do apologize once again for speaking so, so quickly through a lot of the material, and I'm sure I'm going to get comments about that later, so I apologize once again, but hey, if you enjoy the thumbnail, if you enjoy the campaign, leave a... Well, actually, don't leave a like, no. I already, I, I said earlier, I'm not going to ask for likes if Baratia won, and for somehow, some god-awful reason I won, so I'm not going to ask for likes, but hey, subscribe if you're new, and check out my Discord link in the description below, because I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.